Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Vlogmas. In today's video, I'm gonna take you guys through my entire nighttime skin cycling routine. That includes my exfoliation nights, my retinol nights, and my recovery nights. I'm gonna be covering all of the steps that I do within each night routine and also the products that I use. Now, it is quite extensive, I will say, and some may say that it is unnecessary. I don't completely disagree with you. However, because I've been doing a lot of skincare stuff to get my skin to where I want it to be this year, since it's been a very difficult skin year, I guess you could say, I feel like I've finally gotten into a routine with specific products that just really, really work with me, and I don't really feel the need to tone it down or make it even more extensive. I do have my skincare shelf right here. If you didn't see my vlog where I was organizing through all of it, go watch that one if you're curious as to everything that's on this shelf. I did kind of cover some products or all of the products actually that are on this shelf. So you may be familiar, but I'm actually in this video gonna be showing you guys how I use them. All right, I have you on this shelf right now and I want to explain to you guys exactly what skin cycling is. The first time that I had heard about it was on TikTok. There is a dermatologist that really touts the benefits of skin cycling. So I thought, why not try it? Because one, it was very difficult for me to keep track of which products and what kind of ingredients I was using every day. And skin cycling really gave me a routine to fall back on and really get organized with it. The other reason why I skin cycle is honestly because I feel like the routine itself really helps my skin. I feel like I have completely adjusted to it and my skin knows exactly what to expect. And another slightly different reason I think than others is it allows me to go through more of my products and test out more of my products. For example, if it's retinol night, whether I use one retinol or another, my skin still knows that it's getting retinol that night, or at least I like to think. So I am wearing makeup right now. I will show you guys what it's looking like. I've had this on for, I wanna say, at least nine to 10 hours now. It's looking pretty good. I don't have any active breakouts currently. I do have some healing breakouts like on my cheek right here and I had some on my chin as well. I did get a facial last week, so my skin is doing very well right now. So tonight it is a chemical exfoliant night. I always do chemical exfoliants versus physical exfoliants. Sometimes I'll do it, but more often than not, they will be chemical exfoliants. To take my makeup off, I'm using this. This is a Japanese cleansing oil. I don't know how to say this exactly, but it is a Japanese cleansing oil. It's really, really lovely. It's one of the best sellers in Japan currently. I love the way that this smells. It does have a fragrance to it, which is something that I don't often do when it comes to skincare, but I figured I would try it because reviews for this specific product did say that it was meant for very sensitive skin, so I trusted that my skin would be okay with it, and so far it has been. I've just recently started to use this probably within the last week or so because I just finished up my last cleansing oil, and because I am showering tonight, I'm not gonna rinse this here in the sink. I am just gonna rinse it whenever I get into the shower, and I'm going to be cleansing my face with my Panoxyl. I use the 4% Benzoyl Peroxide Creamy Wash every single night. The Panoxyl has been such a huge game changer, if not the biggest game changer for my skin. It truly has saved my skin. It's helped to calm breakouts, it's helped to fight them, and it's also helped to prevent them. I'll use it in the shower, and after that, I will reconvene here with you guys. All right, done with my shower. It was not a hair wash day, so I just clipped it up, and now we're gonna get into the skincare. So I always, always start every night with my Tower 28 SOS Rescue Spray. I'm pretty generous with this. I feel like it just helps to balance my skin, control everything that's going on. You could use this in place of a toner because it's supposed to be gentle enough to do that and help with irritated skin. But I like to use a separate toner mainly because I have so many and I just generally really like toner. For the most part, I'm gonna let it fully dry before going in with my toner. Tonight, I'm gonna be using the Marion May toner. This is the Sika Tea Tree AHA PHA blemish toner. Actually, should I use that? Because I don't really have any breakouts. Let me actually switch this out. I typically like to use this whenever my skin needs a lot of extra 
attention if I'm breaking out or anything like that. So let me actually go in with one of my more gentle ones. Let's do the peach and lily one. I like this because it is quite thick. It does look like it, it would be a water texture, but as you can see, the bubbles are very thick in there. It's a nice like viscosity, I would say, where it's a little bit more, I don't know, all I can keep saying is thick, but I'm just going to pat that in and I also sort of swipe it because I'm impatient and patting skincare in every step. It takes a long time. I don't like the lighting in here, like on this shelf right now. Maybe we'll change it tomorrow, but right now I'm just gonna keep it as is. And for my toners, I don't typically let those completely dry down because I do go in with my Cosrx Snail Essence. I use this every night as well, just two pumps all over the face. I find that this works really, really well for my skin. Definitely test it out if you're unsure. I know some people's skin love it, some people's hate it, and some are just indifferent. Mine, I think, really loves it, so I use it every day. I can't even tell you how many bottles of this I've gone through at this point. Okay, I'm trying to turn the camera even more so that, you know, we get a little bit more light right here. Okay, so that one I'm gonna let completely dry. And to do that, I have this little mini fan I got at like a local beauty depot. It rattles, it's not the best quality, I will admit, but it gets the job done. It has three speeds and it speeds up the dry time for sure. So I love using this and it has a little stand. So sometimes I'll just put it on my uh, sink and then as I like put body, lotion on and stuff like that, I will just like go like this. <laughs> I like to let my skincare dry before this step because I don't necessarily want the exfoliants to go extremely deep into my skin. I find that sometimes it can be a little bit irritating. If you don't want something to penetrate too deep, then I would recommend to let your skin dry down before you go in with it. So the chemical exfoliants that I have on rotation currently, I have the Topicals Faded, my Face Reality 8% L Mandelic Serum, the Glow Recipe Strawberry Smooth BHA plus AHA Salicylic Serum. This one is the newest one to me. And if you saw my Sephora, savings event haul, you saw that I picked this up during that sale. And then lastly, the Sunday Riley Good Jeans Lactic Acid Treatment. I've been using this one for quite a while. I think the last time I exfoliated my skin, I used the Face Reality one. So today I'm gonna be using the Faded Topicals Serum. It's kind of like a lotion. They also have a mist version, but personally, I prefer the lotion because I know exactly how much is going onto my skin. This is a very thin consistency and I like to really concentrate this anywhere that I typically have breakouts. So that would be like the center of my face and chin. This specific one does have a little bit more of a funky smell to it. It is all of those ingredients that they use in them. So don't be alarmed if you do get this and it smells kind of funny. It's supposed to be like that. <laughs> all right, and for this, I do let this pretty much completely dry Sometimes I'll go in with the rest of my skincare damp if I'm very impatient. All right, and I feel like you can already tell, like look how glossy this skin looks. For chemical exfoliants, that's one of the benefits if you do more of a lotion type. Your skin looks so glass-like and smooth. I really love it. And in the morning, I feel like my skin still looks like this. Now for my nighttime moisturizers, I don't really go in with anything else when it comes to active ingredients on exfoliation nights. I just like to let those exfoliants do its thing. So I don't want it to have to like compete with anything else. So now we're gonna go in with moisturizer and currently I'm using these two. Both of them are so close to being empty. So this is the Youth to the People Superfood Air Whip Moisture Cream. This is the original version and and they did just come out with a new formulation, but I'm still working through this before I open that one up. And then we have the Mary and May Sensitive Soothe Gel Cream. I really adore this. This one is really good for morning and night. I actually feel like whenever I'm using strong actives such as chemical exfoliants and retinol, I like to use something very soothing on the skin when it comes to moisturizer, and this is perfect. I just use this little spatula thing. That is plenty. You really don't need a lot of moisturizer at least I don't because I have oily skin. So I'm just gonna go in and put that all over. And typically guys, I would be taking all of my skincare down my neck. However, within the last, I wanna say two weeks, I rediscovered this from Maylee's. It's the Be Poise Neck and Decollete Cream, 
whenever I did my big organizing these shelves video. I did say that I wanted to try using this again and I have been and tell me why my neck has been so soft. Like my, my neck and my chest have been so much softer and I have been noticing some lines forming lower down on my neck. So I was like, I need to do something about that. So I've been using this in place of my skincare, like my face skincare. I like the way it feels. We'll see if it actually tightens everything up. It smells really nice too. And to finish it off, we are gonna be using an eye cream. This again is from Marion May. It's the Trenexamic Acid and Glutathione. And I really enjoy it. I feel like it's moisturizing enough on my skin without being too heavy without irritating my under eyes. And I really like that it's a chemical exfoliant as well. And for my lips right now, I am currently switching these two out, the Lawless Forget the Filler Overnight Lip Plump in Juicy Watermelon and the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask in Chocolate. I think I'll use this one because I haven't used this one on camera, I don't think. It does have a slight brown tone to it, but honestly, it's really not too noticeable. Okay guys, that is the skincare done for chemical exfoliation night or just exfoliation night in general. Nice and dewy, smooth, everything is looking great. And again, we're gonna keep an eye on this guy because it has potential to get larger. I did start treating it last week actually. So I think this is a healing pimple. We'll see what happens with that. That's it, I will see you guys tomorrow for retinol night. Hey guys, I'm back. And tonight is our retinol nighttime skincare routine this is the night where I focus on just using retinol as our active ingredient. So I'm going to show you guys how I do that. So I just put my hair back with this headband. I did wash my hair this morning. I actually went and cycled this morning. So after that, I showered and I washed my hair. So we're not going to be showering tonight. I have these little wrist scrunchies to catch any water while I wash my face. These are game changers. They're so good. And to start off, I didn't wear any makeup today, but I'm still going to use my cleansing oil to get off all of the dirt and the sunscreen on my face. I like to double cleanse every night. I feel like it really gets my skin clear and doing this step helps to prepare my skin for my acne cleanser. And like I mentioned, I do use Panoxyl and I'll show you guys that in just a little bit, but I'm gonna just work this into the skin all over, especially my hairline. I noticed that if I neglect my hairline, I do tend to break out pretty easily there. And this does turn more into like a milky consistency whenever I rinse it. So I'm just gonna rinse it off and kind of like massage it off the same way that I'm doing now. After my first cleanse, I don't dry my face. I go straight in with my Panoxyl. Like I mentioned, I do use Use the 4% creamy version of it and I take a good amount and I just work it into the skin and the way that I like to use this is I'll use a hefty amount I'll work it in to every section of the skin and I think what really makes the biggest difference is that I let this sit on my skin for about two to five minutes just depending on how much I think my skin needs it. I think this really allows it to absorb by any breakouts that I may have. But right now my skin's pretty clear like I mentioned, so I'm probably only gonna keep this on for maybe like two minutes before I go in, massage it off with some water, and then we're gonna pat the face dry. Yeah, I really focus this everywhere on my face. A lot on my jawline too because I tend to break out a lot on my chin and jawline. All right, pretty evenly distributed. So now we're just going to let that sit for about two minutes and then we will be back. All right, just rinsed my face. And I forgot to mention yesterday that the thing that I use to dry my face are these Clean Skin Club towels, these little towelettes. They are biodegradable disposable towels and I find these are way more hygienic and my skin seems to really enjoy it because I don't have to fuss with like a regular hand or face towel where you wash them because I find that detergent tends to really irritate my skin and also you can't really completely get rid of all the bacteria on those towels. So with this, I get maybe two to three uses out of them and then I'm able to toss them. I have a subscription for these, so I get them monthly and I think that they're really, really nice. And I can also use these to like dry my sink area and stuff after I wash my face or brush my teeth. And and it's really great. 
So yeah, just thought I would mention that. So next we're gonna go in with toner. I still use a toner on my retinol nights and typically I'll go in with a more moisturizing toner because I want to make sure that my skin is nice and prepped and hydrated for the retinol so that there's less aggressive effects from it. So tonight I'm gonna to be using the Hada Labo Hydrating Lotion and taking a little bit of that palm on my hands and I'm just going to pat and swipe this on the face. Anywhere that that retinol is going, I wanna make sure that I have a nice hydrated layer or nice hydrated base for it. And this part is very important. I let my skin completely dry before I go in with my retinols because again, if you have more sensitive skin and you find the active ingredients can be slightly irritating to your skin, then let your skincare completely dry before you go in with it because a wet base means that your skincare can penetrate into the skin a little bit deeper. We don't necessarily want this to only be on the top of the face. We definitely still want it to absorb, but I feel like your skin is less sensitive whenever you, know, you let it completely dry between layers. For me, I have found that this works perfectly and I don't have any irritation and I still see really great results. So let me show you my retinol options that I've been using recently. So the first one is the one that I'm gonna be using tonight. It is the Sun By Me Retinol Intense Reactivating Serum. It has a 0.1% retinol in it and it also has Bacuchiol in it and Retinal. So it has retinol and retinal in it. So it's actually formulated for those that have sensitive skin, specifically skin that is sensitive to retinol. So it's made for those that tend to break out or purge from retinol, but it's still really effective and you still see the results that you want from retinol. I've been using this one the longest out of the three options I'm going to be showing you guys. Next, we have the Peach and Lily Retinol for All Renewing Serum. This has 0.1% retinol and 0.3% ectoin. Again, this is supposed to be a very effective retinol because it is a retinol, so it's one level closer to pure retinol. So retinol with an A is stronger than retinol, so that's why you may see results a little bit quicker. I love this packaging, by the way. Peach and Lily packaging is just so beautiful to me. It helps with those fine lines, wrinkles, it helps with blemishes specifically, and I feel like it really does firm up and tone my skin. I don't find that this is irritating. However, I will say that it does feel like it's slightly stronger than the Sun By Me for some reason. I feel like this has more of a chance of irritating my skin if I use it too much but whenever I do rotate this in my routine I feel like the next morning my skin just looks so firm and so smooth and clear it's wonderful and lastly you guys may have seen this in again another advent calendar unboxing that I did this is the Medicaid crystal retinol 6 this is a retinol with an a again I've been testing this one out and I don't know if it's this product or other products Products, but the first couple times that I use this, I think that my skin is slightly purged. So I want to say that it is a little bit stronger than my other two options. So with this one in particular, I would recommend going in with a hydrating serum underneath this as well as that toner. So something like the Innisfree hydrating serum right here, I would go in with that, let that completely dry. And then I would go in with this so we can avoid as much irritation as possible. So I will usually let my skin completely dry for about, I wanna say anywhere between five to 10 minutes before I go in with my retinol. And again, something to speed up the process, we have this little handheld fan. So I'm just gonna use this on my face to completely dry it before we go in with that retinol. All right, so now we're gonna go in with the retinol. I do give it a good shake here because this consistency is actually quite runny. It's kind of like this milky looking texture and it is a little bit thicker. I would still say it's more on the liquidy side, but it definitely has a little bit of creaminess to it. I like to just dot a very small amount on to all the sections of my face. If you are new to retinol, I would recommend that you just take everything that you're going to use on your face onto your finger and then just dot it around. But I have a good idea of how much 
I typically have on the face whenever I use a retinol. So that's why I'm doing that. It's also not the most hygienic to just put the dropper on your face, but I don't know, that's just what I do. <laughs> I focus a lot of my actives on my chin and my jawline because that tends to be where I get the most like hormonal breakouts. And that completes all of the retinol we will be using. I do not go in with a ton. I don't think it's really necessary, at least not for my particular skin. All right, so that that is everything for the actual retinol that we're using. Oh, I did want to mention, hold on. I do still have my tube of tretinoin here. It's pretty used up, but I actually stopped using my tretinoin a couple of months ago because I felt like my skin was reacting badly to it. I know that your skin typically purges on tretinoin, but my purging didn't seem to end. It was at a point where I felt like the tretinoin was just really irritating my skin and actually negatively affecting my skin barrier versus helping it. But I also had read somewhere that if you have adverse reactions to skincare, it doesn't always necessarily show up until weeks later. Like it can show up right away, but typically any breakouts or irritation or inflammation or whatever from skincare happens over time so i feel like the first like month or two well i would say like the first month my skin was doing well it looked good and then all of a sudden i started having intense breakouts I don't think it was just this. I do think it was a combination of different things. I did decide to just like excess out of my routine because it just was not helping. And the breakouts, the purging did not stop. And I use this, I wanna say from March until like June. So I gave it a good go. And unfortunately, I don't think that I will be refilling this prescription because I found over-the-counter retinols that I just trust more and they still give me the effects that I wanted tretinoin to give me. So I don't really find it necessary anymore. And this is a low dosage, by the way. It's a 0.025%, so it's nothing high. Anyways, yeah, that's my little spiel on retinol. Now we're gonna wait another five to 10 minutes to let this completely dry and sink into the skin. I find that I have the most success whenever I let the, the skin dry before and after retinol. The only reason why my retinol nights are probably the longest is because of this dry time because the only other thing that I use on my face after my retinol is a moisturizer. I keep it super super simple and plain on retinol nights because I just want the skin to absorb all of the goodness and all of the retinol that it can without other products interfering. And tonight for moisturizer, we're gonna use the Youth to the People Superfood Moisturizer. I feel like it gives me a little bit more hydration, so it kind of like sandwiches that retinol, but it doesn't compete with it. And I do wanna note that if you do any type of slugging or overnight masks, I would recommend to skip it on your retinol nights. Oh, while we wait for that to dry, my Maylie's Be Poised Neck and Decollete Cream. I do this twice a day by the way i don't know if i mentioned that just trying to get all of the benefits from this all right so the skin has completely dried we're gonna go in now with our moisturizer here and taking a pretty good dollop and i'm just gonna put this all over the face and i'm skipping the neck again because we are using that neck cream on it oh i forgot to use my eye cream hold on let me grab that typically i would use this eye cream before my moisturizer but i just i forgot <laughs> Okay, I also received this in an advent calendar as well. It was a separate advent calendar from this one, but it's the same brand. It's the Medicaid Crystal Retinol Ceramide I3. So it's supposed to be specifically for under the eyes. And this seems to be a little bit more tolerable for my skin. Maybe that's because I'm putting it in just one small specific area. I'm not entirely sure. All right, and we are done. This is our retinol night. That's everything that I typically do. Let me show you guys real quick. All right, here is what the skin is looking like. It's still really nice and nourished. It still looks very hydrated. Doesn't look as glassy or as dewy as our chemical exfoliant night, but that's not really what I'm going for. I just want my skin to be healthy. I really, really love this routine. I don't think that you need to overdo it on retinal nights. If anything, if there's any day for skin cycling that you should take it easy and make it so simple, it would be retinal nights because you don't want to overwork your skin. That is it for tonight and I will see you guys tomorrow for our recovery night.
Hi guys, welcome to the last night of skin cycling. So tonight is going to be our hydration routine. This is when the skin gets to recover. This is when it gets to take a break from all of the actives. And if I decide I wanna do any sort of like face mask or anything, then tonight would be the night that we do that. Let's jump right in. So I did wear makeup today and I'm gonna use my Hair & Make Speedy Mascara Remover. It removes all of my water proof, very stubborn mascara off of my lashes and it's perfect for Asian mascaras because they tend to be the longest lasting and the most stubborn to remove. And just like the other two nights, we're gonna go in with some cleansing oil that's about a pump and a half. And I'm really gonna work this into the skin since we do have makeup on tonight. And I also take this opportunity whenever I'm doing my first cleanse to really feel around on my skin to see if I have any acne forming. It's very, very important if you are acne prone to kind of like know what's going on with your skin, maybe feel around to see if there's any upcoming pimples occurring like right here. I have this guy, I don't know if you guys can see it, but right in the circle right there, I feel that starting to form. So we are going to treat that tonight. And before we rinse that off, that mascara rem remover can get quite oily and filmy. So I do remove it with a separate cotton square here before I rinse my entire face with water. All right, just rinse my face. And like last night, I'm not wiping my face down and drying it. I'm going straight in with my panoxyl, giving it a good layer, especially on this side where I have that pimple starting to form. And then we wait, I think I'll do like two minutes tonight. It seriously just varies like every night how long I keep this on, but I think tonight I will do two minutes. All right, just rinsed my face. So now we're gonna go in with the skincare. And I will warn you guys now that tonight of all the nights is when I can definitely go overboard, especially with all of my steps because I love to give my skin tons and tons of hydration. So starting off with the SOS spray, gonna let that fully dry. Using my little fan, I told you guys, I use this all the time. And tonight to treat that little pimple right there, we are gonna be using my La Roche-Posay Effaclair Duo Dual Action Acne Treatment. This has 5.5% benzoyl peroxide. So this little guy is very, very strong. I do recommend that you only apply it to dry skin. And if you find that it's too strong, I would recommend to do it as your last step in your skincare routine so that it has like some layers Layers to go through before it just penetrates into the skin. So I'm doing a pretty generous amount here and I like to completely rub this in. This is not the type of spot treatment that you just dot on and you leave overnight. You definitely want to rub this in to get the full benefits of it. And whatever I have left on the finger, I'm just kind of feeling around to see if I have any other spots. I have like a residual, really stubborn acne spot right there. It's like a spot, but it also has a tiny little white head on it and it has not gone away. So I'm just going to put some treatment on there too. Gonna let that fully dry and absorb before going in with our toner. And sometimes if this spot is really bad and I need to put like a pimple patch or something on top of it, as well as the benzoyl peroxide, I will use these. These are my pimple patches of choice. They're the Causerx Master Patch Intensive ones because they have tea tree as well as salicylic acid in them. So they do have some active acne fighting ingredients versus just being a hydrocolloid patch. So tonight we are gonna be using the Isn't tree essence toner this is the onion repair one so again it does help with skincare barrier and same thing as the other nights we're just gonna pat and swipe this into the skin and like i mentioned sometimes i do go in with a face mask on these nights tonight i'm feeling a little bit lazy so i don't really want to do that but i will flash here on the screen a couple of my tried and true go-to masks that i've been using recently and if you guys have any further questions then let me know in the comments down below in place of doing a mask i think i will do these little facial pads these are the numbuzin vitamin niacinamide concentrate pads they're brightening and i like these because of the niacinamide i really enjoy using that ingredient whenever i do my recovery nights because i find that it really balances my skin it adds some hydration and it also helps 
control my oils. I love this packaging. It has the little tongs in there and then you just use them to grab your little toning pad and they have two different textures. They have a smooth side and then they have a more uh, textured side right here. You can use these to place them as sheet masks on your face if you wanted or alternatively you could just swipe them on the face nice and quick like any other like facial pad and that's what I'm doing tonight because Again, I'm feeling really lazy tonight. I'm trying to avoid those spots a little bit because I don't want to remove too much of that acne treatment that we put on there. I just want to kind of let it do its thing. And I pretty much swipe this on the face until it feels like it doesn't have any more product on it. All right, and following that, before the toning pad ingredients dry, I'm going to use my Cosrx Essence. To make sure that you don't use this essence on dry skin, you have to have to use it on damp skin because it does pull moisture from the skin, like existing moisture from the skin. So if you don't have any moisture on there, it can just do the opposite and dry out the skin. Next up, I definitely do have a couple of different hydrating serums that I like to use. Again, I will flash them on the screen right here so you guys can see all the different options that I typically go for. I will use these pretty much just any time that I feel like using them. There's really not much of a rhyme or reason. They're all very hydrating. They all have really nice hydrating benefits and they make the skin look really glossy, very plump, very juicy. And also sometimes on recovery nights, I will use products that are more for firming and for like anti-aging. Tonight, I want to use this Number Zen Number no. 3 Skin Softening Serum. It is supposed to be really hydrating and plumping on the skin, but it is also supposed to help with any anti-aging that you may want want to treat like fine lines and wrinkles and elasticity in the skin. And this is not a very slippery serum. It's definitely one that dries down a lot quicker. So if you don't like anything that feels serum-y and greasy on the skin, this would be a really good hydrating one for you to try out. And I'm also gonna top that with one of my absolute favorite serums, the Marin May Niacinamide. This one is gorgeous. It makes the skin feel so glossy and look super glossy, but it doesn't leave my skin feeling sticky and tacky like some niacinamides can leave your skin. It seriously makes my skin glow. And when I use this consistently, I feel like the oils in my skin are definitely more balanced and everything overall just looks more healthy. The skin, especially the forehead, like it looks glossy and shiny. Let me actually grab the camera and show you guys it in better light. And I have been trying out this Holly Frog Antioxidant Dewy Drop. It's supposed to be either a serum or even a moisturizer. Like if you don't wanna go in with a heavy moisturizer, you can opt to use this as one instead of just a serum but I'm gonna use it as a serum. It is a thinner consistency here. As you can see, it runs down the hand a little bit. I haven't used it long enough to really be able to tell too much of a difference, but I like it. It doesn't seem to be bothering my skin. And if anything, it just adds a little extra layer of hydration, which is never a bad thing. And now time to determine if we're going to be using a sleeping mask or if we're just gonna be using a moisturizer or if we're gonna be slugging. And for me, slugging and sleeping masks are kind of like interchangeable. I kind of treat them the same way, but moisturizer wise, I would use the same things, the Youth to the People or the Marin May Sensitive Gel Cream. If we were to slug, or do an overnight mask, I would either use the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm. This went viral a little while ago, I wanna say like last year, and for good reason. I actually started using this when I had like a little bout of dermatitis on my skin like two years ago, and ever since then, I've always had it on hand because it's so nice and soothing. I have this Laneige Sicca Sleeping Mask. It is a cream consistency, but the reason why I think that this one is nice is because it's still a very thin cream Cream. like it still spreads out and absorbs into the skin really nicely so it doesn't feel like a heavy film as I'm sleeping which is very important for me. My probably most used overnight mask would have to be the Cosrx Ultimate Nourishing Rice one. This one feels most similar to a gel cream consistency when it comes to an overnight mask. Lastly we do have the Summer Fridays Jet Lag Mask and this is going to be the thickest of all of of the overnight masks. I like to use this when my skin 
skin's feeling super, super dehydrated. But when I use this one, I don't use as many hydrating serums underneath. And another really nice concoction that I do, which isn't really a sleeping mask, but isn't really just moisturizer, are these two right here. This is the Stratia Liquid Gold Moisturizer. It's now called Lipid Gold. This is the old packaging. And then the Stratia Interface Firming Repairing Peptide Cream. This is more of a moisturizer, but when you mix the two together, it gives you more of a, a little bit thicker of a moisturizer. But these two work simultaneously to heal the skin barrier, give you a lot of hydration, and almost like reset your skin for the next day. This is lovely. I love this i actually do this combination a lot tonight since i do have this pimple forming i don't want to go in with anything too heavy because i already did two forms of niacinamide tonight i'm gonna skip the stratia concoction and just go straight in with a cosrx overnight spa mask this one is going to give me hydration as well as help firm and tone the skin some people like to use their overnight masks on top of moisturizers but i find for me that is just way too heavy for a long time, I stayed away from overnight masks because I thought that they were just not good for my skin and they were breaking me out because they were too heavy. But once I eliminated the moisturizer part of it, my skin started to drink up masks like these and it's wonderful. I don't think I'm going to use a separate eye cream tonight. Sometimes when I use overnight masks, I just like to do a layer of it under my eyes and call it a day. Of course, we are going to use the Maylie's Be Poised on the neck and and the chest here. I'm trying to be really consistent with this because like I mentioned, you definitely get the best results when you're really consistent with it. And lastly, we are going to use my lash serum. I like to use my lash serum on recovery nights because it's the night that I'm really letting the skin feel hydrated and nourished and reset, you know, and I feel like this just fits into the routine really nicely. And it's a great way for me to remember to use my lash serum. So this is the Babe Original Lash Serum. I have been using this for going on, I think four years now. It's the best one, definitely helps with the growth of my lashes. And finishing it off with my Lawless Overnight Sleeping Mask because I'm really determined to finish this one up so I can go ahead and open up a new one. They sent me the Vanilla Mint one and I really want to use that. But you need so little of this to get a lot of moisture, so it's taking me quite a while. That is my entire skin cycle routine all three days, and then after I do this routine, then it just cycles over. So tomorrow night will be our exfoliation night again, and then retinol, and then on and on and on. <laughs> Some honorable mentions, I do want to note that whenever I'm having pretty bad breakouts or if I just have like a very irritated pimple, well, it doesn't even have to be very irritated, I use my light stim for acne. This I bought during the summertime, the Nordstrom anniversary sale. This was my one and only purchase and it was probably the best thing that I could have purchased. This emits red LED and blue LED lights. It is beautiful, you just, plug it in, you turn it on, and it times it for three minutes. After three minutes, it beeps, and then you just move on to the rest of the face. Sometimes for preventative measures before, like say the week before my period or something, I will use this on recovery nights before I do any skincare. After I cleanse my face, I'll go in and just do this all over my face and then I'll do my skincare as normal. My skin has gotten to a place where I only really need to use this whenever I'm having breakouts. When I first got it and my skin was really, really damaged, then I was using this pretty much I think every night and then it turned into every other night and then it turned into as needed. If you have been debating on something to get for acne specifically, I would highly recommend the light stim. And I just wanna give you guys a quick close up of the skin. So here is our last night, our recovery night. This is what we are left with after doing all of that hydrating skincare as well as that overnight sleeping mask. And in the morning, I'm gonna wake up feeling plump and hydrated and hopefully loving my skin and hopefully this little guy ends up going bye-bye. <laughs> All right guys, that completes this entire video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any additional questions for me about products or my routine or anything of the sort, please leave them in the comments down below. I will be sure to get to them as soon as possible. Before you guys go, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this one and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!